It's now time to tune into Folkways FM. The ship is apparently still heading north and is currently in Whitehaven, I've been told, where the crew have been enjoying strolling around Whitehaven Castle, did you know? So without further ado, let's try and pick them up. The warmest of welcomes to September 2022's Almanac. September, from Septum 7. It is a bit weird calling the ninth month the seventh, isn't it? This happened because it was originally the seventh month of the old Roman calendar, which began the year in March. Julian calendar reform shifted the new year back two months. September replaced Helig Manath and Heafest Manath in Old English, names meaning the holy month and harvest month respectively. Scots Gaelic, Intultin, Irish, Manfor, Manx, Mainfawid, Welsh, Merdi, Cornish, Mies Gwingala. It is time to reap what you sow. Traditionally, the time of harvest continues. If you missed last month's show, check it out where we looked at the beginning of the harvest, Lamas or Lunasar. Harvest Home, also called Ingathering, was a traditional harvest festival or supper which took place after all the grain had been safely stored, generally in late September. In Scotland, this time was called the Kern, from the churn of cream that was presented on the occasion. Farmers would prepare a festive meal for their labourers, who usually danced and celebrated long into the night. We looked last month at some last sheaf rites, where the last of the corn or grain, which represents the spirit of the field, was set up in the house or barn where the feasting was to be held. It's interesting to note that the invention of the mechanical harvester has not only simplified the farmer's work, but has advanced the date of the harvest by almost a month. In England, it is often completed before the end of August, whereas it used to be finished, as I said, in late September. Although it does differ year to year, for example, this year, 2022, 95% of the total GB harvest was complete as of the 23rd of August. There are lots of other ways to celebrate this time of year, however. Making your own bread is a great one, getting us directly in touch with the harvest's bounty. Don't be afraid of this, imagining some kind of cottage core nightmare. I baked some bread for the first time in ages recently, and um, I was surprised at just how easy it was. But apart from wheat and yeast, of course, the only thing you really need is time. So if you're home one Sunday, it's a great thing to do between other things. And it got me thinking how strange it is that such an easy, easy, fundamental thing to do is now seems slightly eccentric to bake your own bread that we sit in offices all day and then go and buy some wrapped in plastic. It's hard to unsee when you do have a go yourself and, like I said, see just how simple it is. I do apologise, however, to seasoned bakers who are rolling their eyes to heaven. You'll find a bog-standard recipe in the show notes where you can happily whittle away some September mornings. To be precise, this year the autumnal equinox falls on Friday the 23rd of September. During an equinox, the sun crosses what we call the celestial equator, an imaginary extension of Earth's equator line into space. The equinox occurs when the sun passes through this line. And officially, this date is the first day of autumn. If you woke up in Galway on the 1st of September, the sun rose at 6.47 and set at 20.23. Glasgow, the sun rose at 6.21 and set at 20.11. 
and Guildford, the sun rose at 6.15 and set at 19.48. The full moon is on Saturday the 10th of September. Names for this moon are Harvest Moon, Wine Moon and the Song Moon. The Harvest Moon is the best known being given to the moon closest to the autumnal equinox. At this time, for several evenings, the moonrise comes just after sunset. This results in an abundance of bright moonlight early in the evening, which was a traditional aid to farmers harvesting their crops. This is generally quite a spectacular sight, and the harvest moon looks like a full moon for a good few nights on the whole, so do circle the weekend of the 10th in your diary for some major moon gazing. The moon is then new again on Sunday the 25th of September. Good old gardener's world suggests this month that you sow hardy greens such as kale, landcress, pak choy, lamb's lettuce and mustard for winter pickings. That's a great idea. Pot up herbs such as chives and parsley and place on a sunny windowsill to use during winter. Cut away any leaves covering the fruit of pumpkins, uh, squash and marrows to help the skins ripen in the sun. And pick apples and pears before the wind blows them down and store undamaged fruits if you can't eat them fresh. For foraging, find wild raspberries, wild strawberries Although it's hard to pick wild strawberries in any quantity, the addition of just a few can add a powerful flavour to puddings such as creme brulee or panna cotta. Also rose hips for wines, jellies and jams, and slows used to make the deep red wintry drink slow gin. In terms of setting you a challenge this month, I'm going to do things a little differently. I think we all know this winter is going to be a difficult one. I've heard it preemptively being called the winter of discontent, amongst other things, and I don't think any of us are under any illusions here. So rather than offer you platitudes, I'd like to suggest you sow the seeds for something that will be of use to you this winter. Clearly I've got no idea what this will look like for you, what I do know, however, is it feels like we're about to enter the underworld. That's a good mythic way of framing it. It's not particularly helpful for someone to go, oh, everything will be fine. Sometimes things aren't fine and we need to be able to say that. This is a dark time. In fact, it's clearly been dark for a couple of years. However, everything runs in cycles. We're always in motion, always changing, and this too shall pass. We will emerge out of the underworld. I can't tell you when or what it will look like, but only that it will happen. And actually, being able to say those words, this is a dark time, can be helpful, for forewarned is forearmed. For example, if we're going into the underworld, we wouldn't wear the same outfit as that to uh, loll around on a sun lounger. We get that the assignment is different. A good one to think about is one of your favourite stories. Our hero or heroine often faces adversity. One I often come back to thinking about is the Lord of the Rings, a source of strength for many, many people where the unsuspecting Shire Dwellers are tasked with destroying an evil that's trying to claim the world, no pressure then. We ourselves are definitely not in the Shire anymore. Where we are in the novel is uh, up for some debate, but um, we are definitely battling the forces of evil. Smidgen dramatic? I'm not sure. So make sure you've got the right clothes for your underworld journey. I don't think there's anything too small to be of help. Things can seem small on their own, but over many months can contribute together to something bigger. Never lose heart, and I'll see you when we emerge on the other side.